are. Look at the sea and the waves. It's awesome. Yes, it is. And look, the dolphins and sea lions have come to say hello. So, today's episode will be about dolphins? Well, this episode won't just be about dolphins. It's about many different animal friends living in the water. We'll take a peek at them and see how they live under the water. Wow, the dolphins are inviting us in. Well, we better not refuse such an invitation. Take a deep breath and let's go under. OK, Grandma, let's hear it. You know so much about nature. Oh, what is that? They have wings. Are they some kind of underwater bird? No, no. Those are devil rays. They are a type of stingray. Is the sea lion afraid of them? They may look huge and scary, but they mean no harm to us or the sea lions. They only eat plankton. Plankton are one of the tiniest creatures in the water. Sometimes you can't even see them with your eye. Not like these small ones. They're fish, right? Yes, these are fish and corals. Let's take a closer look. What's this fish doing? Does it eat stones? Oh, come on. No one eats stones. That's just the way this fish searches for food. It filters whatever is on the seabed. And look here. It's a squid. When she's afraid, she lets off a burst of ink. Oops! And she's gone! Maybe we'll meet her again. Underwater life is so colourful and diverse. That's why I like it so much. But Grandma, why is it like this? Well, that's how a variety of life appears. There are all sorts of shapes and colours, even different ways of life. Like right here. That's a strange animal. It's called a crinoid. And here you can see how the blue ribbon eel hunts. Wow! And this fish looks like some kind of water plant. Oh look! This fish is walking! I thought the fish could only swim. Don't be too surprised. That one's called a frogfish. And look, here is a sea cucumber. It's sticking its tentacles inside its mouth to eat what's stuck on them. And that's how frogfish suck the water to strain for food. We've seen him before, right? Yes, yes, even the snake eel is watching him from its hiding place. Wow, this one has weird eyes. They're a little scary. Who is it? That's a peacock mantis shrimp. He's very curious and wants to see what's going on. He's always ready to explore. Oh, and this is another sea cucumber, right? Yes, you're right. Mr. Peacock Mantis Shrimp is watching while hiding in his shelter between the coral. Is this really how he eats? Yes, it is. He captures food particles and puts them inside his mouth. There are hundreds of species of sea cucumber in the ocean. They can vary in length from but a few centimetres to several metres. Don't be scared. We're only curious to see how you live underwater. We are your friends. There are many creatures living in the ocean, like nudibranchs, mollusks and flatworms. But mostly there are fish, right? There are numerous varieties of animals and fish alike. Look how dangerous the lionfish looks. Even Mrs Squid looks a little scared. That was Mrs Squid, right? That's right. She has a good reason to be scared. The lionfish is poisonous. His thorns are very dangerous. I think Mrs Squid would rather be safe and swim away. Oh, it's a... Uh, what's that called, Grandma? Oh, I know, a devil ray! This 
This octopus prefers to hide among the corals. Look, here's another scared one. Well, everyone in the ocean has to be very careful because there are many dangers. Wow, that starfish doesn't even realize she's climbing over a fish's head. That fish is so well camouflaged. And look what a master of camouflage this frogfish is. Didn't we already see one of those? Yes, we did. But the one we saw earlier was a yellow one. A grandma, what's this monster? That's not a monster, it's a fish. It's called Inimicus, and just like the lionfish, it is poisonous. There's always something to look at. But I don't get it, Grandma. Why are there so many fish and other animals living underwater? And each one is completely different. In our world, everything is varied. Each living thing, humans, animals on dry land, animals living in water, birds, plants and even insects are all different. Some look like a cucumber, others look like a ball of wriggling worms. But most of us have three things in common. The need to breathe oxygen, to eat and to breed. These things are part of life's essentials. Grandma, now that you say it like that, it seems to me that everyone is not so different after all. Basically, in the end, everyone has the same goals, but they go about it differently. Some animals even live together, even though they're not the same species. That's called symbiosis. Like here. Looks like a peacock mantis shrimp, right? But this one has less colours. Because it's not a peacock mantis shrimp, though it is related, it belongs to the same species of crustaceans as the peacock mantis shrimp. A turtle! I know these guys well! Grandma, what did you say about that symbiosis? Well, look here. Those are clownfish, and that's a sea anemone. You know them well from a previous episode. The anemone uses her stinging tentacles to protect the clownfish from any predator fish. And the clownfish, in turn, cleans and feeds the sea anemone. They help each other, and that's symbiosis. Aha! Even Mrs. Turtle says she understands. This animal looks really scary. Uh, and it practices symbiosis too. You've got it a bit mixed up. This is a starfish, and there's a little shrimp hitchhiking a ride on her back. And is this some kind of flower? No, that's a sea anemone. Bushes a fish as well? Yes, it looks scary, right? She puts out a strong warning because she's pretty dangerous. She's called a rhinopia scorpion fish. Wow, Grandma, I wouldn't want to look like her. Well, for her, it's normal, and I bet many people like the way she looks. I think I like these sea snails the most. Those are nudibranch. Look how they breathe in the water. They have gills on their backs that are constantly moving to drive in fresh, oxygen-rich water. Can you recognise who this one is? Is it another walking fish? Well, it is another type of frogfish. As you can see, there are many species of them. Wow! It's a squid! The 
frogfish is going to check her out. Maybe you're right. Let's get a closer look. That's cool how she can change her colours. It'd be great fun if people could change their colours as well. Can you imagine that, Grandma? What a silly thought. People would walk on the streets and constantly be changing colours. <laughs> We certainly learned a lot today from everything we've seen, but it's almost time to say goodbye to our underwater friends. No, not yet. Look at those sea lions playing around. Let's stay with them for a while. No, no, maybe next time. We've already learned a lot about sea lions anyway. The dolphins have come to say goodbye, and they're asking how we liked the underwater world. A lot. I wish I could be a dolphin or sea lion. I'd love to be swimming and diving all day long. Grandma, I want to be a sea lion. If you were a sea lion, you wouldn't be able to do anything else. You wouldn't be able to do all the other stuff you like so much. Well, so maybe just for a little while, like for a holiday. It'll be better if we go to the sea together. You'll put on your swimsuit and we'll swim in the waves like them. What do you think? OK, Grandma, that sounds good. After all, I like being human the most. Even sea lions and dolphins agree. They look forward to us coming again for a visit. OK, let's say thanks to all our water friends for showing us their beautiful and diverse world. And now it's time to say goodbye.